Hey there, folks. This is John from Advanced Diagnostics USA. We have a 2019 Mustang here that we're going to show you the new software on. As you just heard, the alarm is active. There's a couple of things that we want to do first. We want to remove the tray from the uh, center cup holder. And our programming slot is down in there. Uh, to remove it, there's a small little tab here which you can grab it with and pull it out. All right. We're all connected up to the uh, car's OBD port. And see the alarm is active, although it's not uh, horn chiming right this second. Go ahead and select forward. And the menus aren't quite set up yet the way they should be. They will be for the release. And we're going to select off the menu the vehicle. And then we're going to select special functions, which will take you to the proper spot. Okay, switch ignition off. All right, don't have any choice. It's a lost key situation. Now for lost keys, you want to choose program lost keys down there at the bottom. You'll we'll see as we connect, we get the car's VIN number and the part number for the ECU. Uh, go ahead and select program lost keys. And then you hit the green check mark as usual to start the procedure. Okay. This procedure should be used in an all keys lost scenario. Is the alarm active? Well, it's active, so I'm going to say yes. Okay. If the car is equipped with ultrasonic sensors, please make sure they are covered. Okay, what they're talking about there is on this vehicle, it's up on the center console um, near the uh, rearview mirror. There are these uh, sensors right here. Um, and you want to make sure that you cover those. So what you're going to do is you're going to use some tape or something similar um, to cover those over. They're, they're highly sensitive and they will interfere with the process later on. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and cover them uh, a little bit later on in the process. But, I mean, you can cover them now or you can cover them later. It's, but they're going to have to get covered for you to be successful. So... I'm going to go ahead and continue with the process here for now. Okay, open the driver's door. With the door open, use a screwdriver to set the door latch to the closed position and locked position as if the door was closed and locked. Keep the door in, the, in this position until the keys are programmed. Okay, what they're talking about there is you want to make sure the door remains open and you want the car to think the door is closed and latched. So you go in here and you move the catch, okay, you just use a screwdriver or a key blade or something, your finger, and you set that to the latched position, okay, very simple. Come back over here to the programmer, hit OK. During the following next steps, you'll be instructed to disconnect and reconnect the vehicle's battery. Smart Pro will attempt to silence the factory alarm when the battery is reconnected. Please follow all the steps carefully. You will have a choice later in the process to erase or add keys. Okay, so we can either, you don't have to decide right this second, but if, you, if you're gonna erase, you're gonna need two keys. Of course, this is Ford, so, uh, but you can also just add a key. All right, so what we wanna do now is uh, hit okay. Okay, and the Smart Pro instructs disconnect the battery and leave it disconnected, then press OK. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. So on the Mustang, the uh, battery is up in the uh, hood area, engine compartment area. I've opened up the hood and you've got a couple of uh, grommets to take out. Go ahead and pull those. Set them aside so I don't lose them. Okay. Go 
actually three of them on this little cover that you need to get access to the battery. Okay, cover just lifts off, put it aside, and now I've got access to the car's main battery. Now you can undo the uh, passenger, the um, the ground side or the uh, power side. I like to do the ground side. So you just loosen the nut all the way. And what you want to do is you want to lift off the connector carefully. Okay, and you want to just set it aside. Somewhere where it's not going to be touching anything that's going to ground it. Okay, so I've disconnected the car's battery and I'll go back to the Smart Pro at this point and finish up. We'll need to come back here, but let's let's do that. Let's go back to the Smart Pro now. Okay, so I have just disconnected the car's battery as instructed. And this Smart Pro is telling me to press OK after I've disconnected it, so I'm going to press OK. Okay, it's going to have me wait about 30 seconds or so, and that's to have the car's uh, system completely discharge. So we'll go ahead and wait. Okay, now here's the, the real important nuts and bolts of this procedure here. This is where it can get um, not complicated, but this is what you want to follow. Okay, please connect the battery back to the car. In the background, the Smart Pro will attempt to gain access. Upon reconnecting, the alarm will either stay silent or continue to sound. The goal is silence. If the alarm does not silence, please disconnect again, wait 10 seconds, and reconnect. Do this until the alarm is silent. It may take a few tries. So that's the uh, that's the instructions right there. That's what you're going to do. So I'm going to go over back to the battery and uh, come back. So I'm back at the battery, and I'm going to reconnect the ground side. Now the important part about this is when you connect it, you want to stay connected until you've determined whether the alarm is going to remain silent or not. You don't want to connect it for a second, have the alarm silent, and then somehow disconnect. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back on. Okay, now I don't know if you heard that, but there was a large click from the engine compartment. And that's what you want. And go ahead and tighten this back up. That's a 10 millimeter socket, by the way, that used to disconnect the battery. Okay, I'm going to close up the hood. Come back to the tester. Hit OK. And now it's going to say reading data. Please wait. This step will take a few minutes. It's actually more like about five or ten minutes. So I'm going to shut off the video and come back. So here you can see how I've covered those ultrasonics. I've taken a, a large amount of sticky tape uh, and I've covered it over. You may not need to be as severe as this, but uh, you know, the point is that they need to be covered. And uh, any way that you can do that, any way, shape, or form, towel, tape, whatever you can use uh, to cover those over completely uh, is what you want to do there. Okay, like I said, this, this process here, this reading the data, has taken about almost 10 minutes, uh, eight, 8 or 10 minutes, and we're about to come out of it. Okay. Now this screen tells us what's obvious here is the alarm should now be sounding once again and that this is normal, as you can hear it in the background. Don't let that part of it uh, disturb your process at all. Don't do anything funny like disconnect or anything. You stay connected and just carry on. That's why the screen is telling you that this is normal. Okay, so go ahead and press OK. Okay, so this step will take approximately 10 minutes. During this step, the horn alarm will sound or should be sounding for the first few minutes, then go silent. Approximately 10 minutes, after approximately 10 minutes, listen carefully for a double beep of the horn. Okay, so I'm going to stay connected here just for a minute, just to show you what, what we're talking about here. In that 
this horn alarm sound, there you go, will continue for a minute or so, and then it will sort of go silent, and you'll still have the flashers on the dash, because the alarm is still active, but uh, you won't hear the uh, horn beeping the whole time. So what's going to happen is, and I'm going to try and come back at the ground to 10 minute mark and catch it, you'll hear a double beep from the horn, and that will be your um, your key or your, your clue to uh, continue on. So you're being instructed to wait for that, that double beep, and uh, that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to give you some more instructions. Please, during the wait, try to be silent and not disturb the car's ultrasonics or any of the doors. Once you hear the double horn beep, press OK. Be patient and do not press OK until you hear the double beep. So at this OK stage right here, I don't want to press that until I hear that double horn beep. Okay, I think it's pretty self-explanatory there about that in the instructions. But if you watch this video and you pick up anything off of it, that's one of the things that's most important. You want to just sit here, kind of be quiet, and wait. And I did have the uh, ultrasonics all covered over one day, and um, I shouted out the door at somebody, and that set the alarm off again. Uh, with the horn chirping and everything, so you want to just uh, kind of chill. All right, so I'm going to come back and try and catch the horn for you guys at the approximate 10 minute mark. So we're about uh, five minutes into the, I don't want to be too loud, we're about five minutes into the uh, wait procedure, and I just wanted to show that the, uh, the alarm has gone completely silent at this point. And we're just waiting for that horn chirp to come in, the double beep. Alright, let's try and come back and catch it. So it should be coming down to the home stretch here. There you go. You heard that? That was the uh, double beep of the horn. And now that we have that, we're going to come down and press enter on the tester, or OK on the tester. So you're going to get a please wait message. Security access granted or gained. I'm going to hit OK at this point. OK, so here's a choice of where you want to either add a key or erase the keys and put two back in. So I'm going to select yes if you want to, I'm going to read this off. Select yes if you want to clear keys. Select no if you want to add keys without clearing. Only select yes if you want to clear keys. If you want to clear keys, you'll need to have two keys available to be successful. So yes will clear and no will take us to adding. Now in this case I'm going to want to clear and I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. Okay, keys have been cleared. Okay, insert a key to be programmed into the slot. So I've got my first key in the slot. Uh, I like to put them in there. Uh, buttons forward. Insert all the way down in there. Hit OK. And you can see on the bottom of the screen there you, you do have zero keys program right this second. So that will change to one after I hit OK and the lock cycle and the car uh, programs the first key. Okay, it's done that. Do I want to add a new key? Yes, I do, because I have to have a second one in there. So I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to put my second key into the slot. I'm going to again hit yes. Insert key to be programmed into the slot. Okay, I've already done that. Hit OK. Car lock cycle and we now have two keys programmed. Alright. Now I don't want to do a third one. If I wanted to do a third, I could just do it right there and then. But I don't. 
and I believe the uh, maximum is four. So I'm going to say no because I've got the two that I wanted in. And now the procedure is complete. And you can test your remotes. See that they're functioning. And we are good to go. Thanks for watching, folks. This is John from Advanced Diagnostics. And it's been my pleasure showing you this new procedure.